Well, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the Parrot Press. In the last video, I asked four of SoRare's best, four SoRare experts, four SoRare guys that have been around for a long time and know how to play the game, exactly what they would do in my gallery. I wanted some tips, some advice, and to know that if they was in charge, exactly what they would do. Now, if you haven't seen that video, hit pause on this one, go and watch that one because we're going to be talking about what I've done since that advice in my gallery. Now, there was a few things that they said. They said around getting rid of the super res that I've got, focusing on different competitions, um, selling a couple of the kind of riffraff, focusing on some of the key uh, key pieces to really enhance my gallery and, and a few other things. So yeah, if you haven't seen that video, go and watch that. So what have I done since? Well, let's start with the super res because that's what I needed to do first. I needed to get rid of the super res because it's not a competition that I'm going to be focusing on um, moving forward. Um, it was just a... I don't know. I, I liked my super rares. I know that they wasn't the, the the best, the most amazing, but within so rare, I'm sure you guys can uh, agree that you find this weird bond with them um, for some reason. Now I got rid of Gressel. So what I'd done was sent a little bit of cash plus Gressel, uh, Gressel for a new season, uh, Gia Kamakas. So GG there from, from Atlanta, which actually paired with my um, Brooks Lennon that I had uh, that I've already got the new season one now the kind of valuations differ a little bit at the moment because um, on that day the new season GG was about point, point zero 0.05 and uh, Gressel was going for I kind of valued, valued him at about point zero 0.03 so it almost worked in my favor on that day even though the valuations are different, uh, you know, so rare data are saying something different, but um, but yeah, it wasn't a it wasn't a bad deal, I don't think, considering what GG would would give me for the MLS. Now there has been some news come out about him that he might be transferring to the to a Mexican side, um, and if he does, I don't actually think that's the end of the world. Even though I don't play contender, but I still think that he's going to score well there, and I can utilize him in in All Star for the rest of the season. Um, or until All Star actually finishes, but let's keep it moving. So Gressel went. The other two that went was Lovitz and uh, Nuhu, and they went for Julian Carranza. So this was a swap. I didn't send any cash with it. I valued these guys at again 0 0.20, 0 0.025. I valued all of them exactly the same, and I managed to pick up the Carranza. Um, at the time, he was probably about 0 0.045. Um, I mean, valuation that day, they've got it a bit more, but I think this is always a little bit out. So it wasn't it wasn't too bad of a deal, in in my opinion. Um, picked up a new season Carranza that I could utilise in in-season competitions because, again, that was another piece of advice was to focus on Challenger or to potentially focus on Challenger in-season, try and get some money back into the gallery to then spend it on different areas, you know, maybe a Premier League team, something like that. And Carranza would absolutely be a forward that would be able to return some goods for me. He gets decisive, plays in a do dominant team to get me some uh, yield back. So that was all my super S pretty much gone. The ones that I can sell, the other ones are DMPs because they play in non-covered leagues. Um, but Carranza's come in, GG's come in. Um, I bought Andrew Gutman um, for a, a really cheap price. I just needed him to come in. And to do a job for one week, which he didn't really do. I thought that he would be better than he, what he was, actually. I think he was undervalued um, going to Chicago, coming back from, uh, from injury. But let's let's just move on from him because it's not very exciting, is it? The next one, um, I sent one of my old rewards and picked up this guy. Um, a rookie card because it would give me that XP um, boost for the collection because that's something that Nepenthe said. He said, you know, try and get to the three XP potentially from a collection side of things for some of your uh, some of your players, some of your teams and give them that extra boost. And I thought that Atlanta would be one that I could focus on because I think that Brooks Lennon is one of the best defenders in the MLS. Um, I then got GG, I then got this guy and then it could uh, give me that, you know, that 2% I think it gives me um xp for when i'm putting them in some some decent lineups then i got rid of rafa silva and good job i did because he's just moved to saudi arabia um i think it's saudi pretty sure it is a saudi team out there um i could have picked up about three weeks before i could have picked up four times what i did with him 
Um, but he had some really good fixtures with Benfica. You know that I've got Di Maria, I've got Otamendi, and I kind of liked that little stack. But then all of a sudden, they must have known that he was not going to renew or that he was definitely going to be leaving because they didn't they didn't play him basically so i couldn't utilize him as as well as i wanted but got some eve eve in for him i then sold um andrew thomas now if you follow the gallery you know that i've got uh stefan fryer and i was keeping andrew thomas here because i actually won him uh, but i was keeping him there in case anything happened to fryer and the, yes that might be the case moving forward maybe i'll buy this guy back uh, ev eventually to do, to handcuff him with Stefan Fryer but I needed the cash to do some stuff that I actually wanted to do and there was a little bit of an increase as well at that time um, because Stefan Fryer was out so yeah cashed in on him maybe I'll buy back a little bit less than what I sold him for in the future um, and then I also sold a Jordi Alba and I sold him for I mean he's probably going for double that now I don't know um, or cash on averages now is actually a little bit less than that, which is interesting. Um, but he was out injured. I didn't know when he was going to be back. I think he is back now. But again, I wanted to take the uh, take the ETH and do something else with it. Um, and I picked up Jao Paolo. Now, Gator Guy said this, I think it was specifically around strengthening the midfield area of my in-season challenger teams. And um, Jao Paolo, but I already had Rui Diaz. Again, looking from a collection point of view, I've got Stefan Fryer, uh, maybe a little Seattle stack coming in there, get some XP on the collection bonus. Then I've got Atlanta and Seattle to give me that extra 2%, 3%, 4%, whatever I decide to to go uh, to, to build it to. But Jao Paolo is now back. Um, he's fully fit. He's going to be starting again and hopefully bringing in some of these, you know, if I just go to all, um, bringing in some of these dark green scores. And they come in with a 72 last game. He didn't even complete the 90 minutes, but he already racked up 37 AA Expect him in this run with a home game at Salt Lake. Even the away fixture at Sporting, I think that's fine. Minnesota at home, Dallas at home, Chicago at home, New England at home. I think they've got a really good run. So I might even think about picking up some more um, Seattle Seattle guys and follow Nepenthe's advice around getting some collection bonuses as well for in-season. Uh, but for now, Joe Polo comes in. Decent price, I think, as well um, from what I paid for him. Uh, for an in-season card and what he's potentially going to yield me back. So he comes in. Next thing I done was picked up um, Fafa Picout. I've just butchered his name, haven't I? I? I don't know how to pronounce his surname. Um, the reason why I picked this guy up, I was doing a little bit of scouting actually, and um, it wasn't just after this. I think it was like after this 29 or whatever, but I was looking at some of the forwards that are out there that are a little bit undervalued. And when you look at this guy, I, I think he is a little bit undervalued. Um, now he goes away for his World Cup uh, qualifier, qualifiers coming up, which is a, a touch annoying. But I think that he's locked in there at Vancouver. Um, and I think that he's, I just think that he's good value in terms of shots taken, chances created. I think that he's got a few big chances missed, like not him actually big chances created in some of these, which would have actually rocketed in his scores as well. Um, but I'll be playing him this week and he's got a decent fixture against Colorado coming up as well. If he plays in that, because as I said, he's going for traveling, but I think he's a little bit under the radar. Um, and I just wanted him in the gallery to, to boost that in season challenger team again, not the one that I'm going to put in as a priority, but maybe like a D4 team to get me out of that because he's capable of, of high scores. And for that price, I just thought, why not? Let's just pick him up. Next one I picked up um, was another in-season challenger midfielder, um, but Davy Flores. And when we look at this guy, he is a tackling machine. He's just come off the back of an 87 as well. Um, I think since I've picked him up, he's had... All right, he didn't play that one because that was a, a midweek one, I think it was. But he's had a 30 AA and a 27 AA in there as well. And he is a tackling... God, um, the amount of tackles that this guy actually makes 
is insane. Um, I don't know what he done on this one. Probably not a lot. Only three, but I think on one before that he done he had like five successful tackles or something. Playing in a Toronto team that is up and coming a little bit now. Um, I've already got that Insigne card. It's an old season one, but I saw this guy and I thought that he would be able to boost a, um, boost my in season challenger midfielder specifically alongside Eric Tommy. But I've got alongside uh, Joel Palo that's that I've now picked up. I think he's a I think he's a decent pick up um so yeah in another in season one coming in then i actually sold uh, my andre blake to basilbot um for a decent price as well uh for for what was it 0 0.049 now i don't know what he's going for now but i, I looked at his new season and uh, it's pretty much the same price um i didn't know what was going on with his injury is is the bill and end all with it and i said when i was picking this guy up a few videos back that he he doesn't co correlate uh with wagner too much but he's a very very solid goalkeeper and when they do you know wagner likes the spike and things like that so it does make sense and maybe i do buy him back in the upcoming weeks and once we know what's going on with his injury and when he comes back from um Copa America, I think it is, that he's obviously going to be the number one goalkeeper if he's fit there as well. So I might be able to get some utility out of him there. But yeah, I, I don't think he's going to be playing this week. I think they're after a second opinion. But if we look at his season so far, the amount of DMPs that he's got, um, I thought that I could just utilize that ETH somewhere else um, and potentially win some rewards while he's out to then pay for him to come back. Um, but but yeah, it'd be interesting to see what goes on with Andre Blake. But he has just signed a brand new deal with them. So he's going to be there for the next few seasons as well. Because I think that's why his price was dipping. Because he put out some cryptid um, cryptid uh, tweet or Instagram video or something like that. Where people were thinking, what the hell is going on with him? Is he unhappy? Is he going to leave? Well, he's shut everybody up. He's signed a new contract. So he's going to be there for the foreseeable future. And with that ETH, I then went and picked up, um, and actually had a little bit of change, a new season Steve Clark. And this was a piece of advice coming from Led, was about doubling down on some of your players that you've already got. Now, I trust Steve Clark as a card to put him in any lineup and do well. If we look at his scores here, yes, there's some yellow ones in there, but he didn't keep a clean sheet in his last three, and yet he still averaged like a 50 score there because of his AA. And... Um, as we've said before, time and time again, we look at his home fixtures. Um, let me just move, take all of this off as well. Not that it makes too much of a difference, but he's decent at home. Um, you know, it's probably like one in two there in terms of getting a green score. And I thought, well, why not? If I'm confident in putting him into lineups, I'm confident in putting him into big lineups, then why not double down, pick up another card of his, um, is he going to retire at the end of the season? Who knows? But at the time being, I think from now until the end of the season, in in season, if I'm playing him, I think that he um, he returns probably you know half, if not three quarters, if not all of uh, what I paid for him there. So Steve Clark comes in, and I've got two of him now. The annoying thing is with Steve Clark actually is that he had a bad clash um, on his head. I think he broke his nose and had some sort of concussion and he must do cause he, he was taken to hospital and stuff. He's all okay now according to his Instagram, but, um, yeah, he's going to be out. So the good thing is, is that I picked up that table weeks and weeks ago that I can come in, can come in now and, uh, be the number one for Houston for, I don't know how many weeks, at least I've got some sort of cover there. Um, Julian Carranza. Now I spoke about him earlier that he'd be a good pickup for me, etc. But I've actually sold him. I sold him to a bot. Um, got an all right price for him as well, considering what he was then. Um, but if we look at him since I sold him, he's had two green scores. So that's that's nice, isn't it? Yeah. But these were the scores that he was kind of having. Um, I don't know. He's got he's got a really good fixture list kind of coming up. But yeah, I don't know. Sold him, made the decision, didn't want him, didn't like him. Um, and then I picked up uh, Hollingshead. And since I picked up Hollingshead, what's happened? Well, he ain't played. So that's nice as well, isn't it? Um, you know, a piece of Nepenthes advice was to 
pick up some more top quality defenders, which I absolutely need, something that I was looking at. And Hollingshead kind of fitted the bill, really. Again, a new season, uh, uh, like an in-season card so that I can utilise him in Challenger. So if I had a Steve Clark, a Hollingshead, a Jao Paulo, a Ra- uh, Rui Diaz, and then, a, and then a classic card, that's a strong lineup for an in-season Challenger. So he comes in and he does tick that box for good quality defender, but I don't know what's going on with him at the moment. I think it's a, an issue with his neck. Uh, but I can't be sure on that. But hopefully he's back soon. But I did pick him up for uh, 0.01, I think it was, 0.016. Yeah, which, again, at the time wasn't too bad. His floor now is very really low, but I can imagine his in seasons probably double that. But Hollingshead comes into the gallery. And then I went ahead and picked up a second um, Stephen Fry, new season, new uh, in season. I keep saying new season, but it's actually in season. But technically, technically, it's a new season. But anyway, uh, picked up another one. He was another guy that I just trust. You know, I look at the um, look at the goalkeepers across the MLS, and the two goalkeepers that I just trust the most is Stefan Fry and uh, Steve Clark. And so I just thought, well, yeah, he might retire at the end of the season, but I think he's just signed a new one that's got an option for next year at least. Um, so I think he stays around and then retires after that. And I just thought, well, again, a new in uh, an in season Stefan Fry is going to return some some uh, cash for me, I believe. And because I've already got Joel Paolo, I've already got Raul Rui Diaz. Um, why not add him to the collection and, and and get a bit of collection bonus as the pros advised me to do? So Stefan Fry comes in as well. Um, but then I sold the old Stefan Fry to pick up a new season, uh, Brad Guzan. And you might look at that and think that's a little bit crazy, but the old season Stefan Fry, yes, I could absolutely utilize, but using a new in season Brad Guzan along with um, Brooks Lennon kind of just made sense to me. It gives me that extra option. Um, and again, not all eggs in one basket, because if I had two Stephen Fryers, two Steve Clarks, and they both got injured, and Steve Clark has got injured since then, um, but if Stephen Fry did, then I can't potentially put out four lineups. So I'm a little bit risk adverse there uh, by picking up a Brad Goosen, but I also make, think it makes sense from a collection point of view, pairing with um, Brooks Lennon and Diego Armada that's I've already got, and uh, Gigi as well. So... Yeah, um, probably looking back, it's not the best deal that I've done, but I've got some reasons behind it at least that I can fall back on. Um, then I picked up an Alex Roldan to keep that uh, Seattle in-season stack coming. I think, again, that he's another quality-ish um, defender that can that can have these peak scores. So it just adds a little bit of something to, to my gallery. And obviously if I do want to run a Seattle stack in a cap 240 mode or whatever it might be in the matchups actually right, then I think that he's one of the defenders to have from that team. Um, although all of them are pretty good actually saying that. Jackson Reagan, uh, Yamar, and obviously uh, Nuhu Tolu on the left-hand side as well. They can all spike. They can all do some stuff. And maybe I'll pick up some more as we move forward. But Alex Roldan comes in as well. Um, I don't know why it's come up like that, but I bought uh, Danny Muskovsky uh, as well on auction. Again, just to get me that XP. I think I'm on two XP now as well. Um, not too much money at all, but just thought I'd get him in. Um, done that, done that, done that. And then I won this guy, which I was actually looking at him last season before all the changes were made because... He can score really, really well, and he plays in a side that has players that score really, really well, but I think that they've just been promoted, so I don't expect to see these green scores. Um, but I sold him to get some ETH in, uh, not too much, just sold him to a bot straight away. And then what was the last one that I'd done? Um, I won this guy as well, and I sold him to get some ETH in the gallery as well. So what does that make, What does that look like now? That brings you kind of totally up to speed. Let's get rid of the limiteds because they're basically worth nothing. Um, got some Seattle boys in there now. Got some more Atlanta boys in there at the moment. Um, doubled up on the goalkeepers. Um, although I backtracked on Stefan Fry, but at least doubled up on Steve Clark, which I think is a good move. I strengthened my in-season challenger teams um, and uh, got some collection stuff in there as well. So I think that I followed what the experts have told me to do, or what they what they would do in in uh, my position um is this gonna work i don't know 
make sure you subscribed um and if you like this video you know hit the like button leave a comment down below have i made some decent purchases would you have followed that advice as well but this is kind of two of out of three of these videos the first one getting the advice this one action in the advice and then in a week or two time i'm going to come back and reflect and see what i've won see if it's actually improved my gallery or not so yeah hit that subscribe button go follow me on uh on twitter at the parrot press because i normally kind of post who i'm buying and what my lineups are and stuff like that um we've got a deadline in a couple of hours time so i need to do some some lineup building but if you like this video hit the like button if you want to see some more and want to see how this performs then uh hit the subscribe button and as always guys good luck and i'll see you in the future